Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us um, on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it is posted to our show archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access um, all of the show recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you who are not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, so similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services and programming and resources to all types of libraries in state. So uh, we will have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Um, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we do have uh, sessions that are done by Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes. Uh, talking about things we offer here through the commission, but we do bring in guest speakers and that is what we have this morning. Uh, joining us today is Kelly Kenny. Good morning, Kelly. Sorry, I have my volume up so loud I can't hear anything. Nope. <laughs> Side morning, effect. Kelly. Yeah, well, hello. <laughs> Hi. And um, she is, well, um, she is actually currently, right, the president of the Nebraska School Librarians Association? Uh, past president. Past so. president, most recently past president, yeah. okay. Um, but is also a librarian at um, Hillside Elementary School here up in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm in Lincoln, she's in Omaha. Um, and she's going to talk about being a Canvaholic and how we can all be one too. <laughs> um, I know I use Canva, I've used Canva a lot. Um, we use it here at the commission for lots of things now and it is a great resource. And um, so I was really happy to see this presentation myself just to see if maybe I can get some new tips and tricks on how to use it. So I will hand it over to you, Kelly, to tell us all about it. Thank you. Um, I apologize for the music being a little loud. I've discovered that you could add Canva um, free music to all your Canva things. So of course I got to have a fun little intro. Um, uh -huh. I'm super glad and thank you guys for having me talk about Canva. Um, I am a Canvaholic. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Um, so like if you think about the Merriam-Webster dictionaries, their website officially says that a holic means someone who is someone that likes something a lot. So there's like chocoholics, workaholics, um, bookaholics and the list goes on and while all those perfectly describe me I think Canva holic might be the best because I like it a lot um, every day when I come to school my um, Google Chrome tabs include my email my Google Drive my like lesson plan for the day and then I always have Canva open as well um, whether it's like for worksheets for flyers research organizers signage um, posters, heck, even I use it for my birthday invitations for my little kids at home. Um, Canva's always had my back. So I'm really excited today to talk to you about um, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned on my Canva journey. Uh, I think I've been using it for seven years now. So um, going way back uh, to 2016. So just a quick introduction. Um, my name is Kelly Kenny, and I am an elementary school librarian here in Omaha at Hillside. Um, I also serve as the um, K-6 uh, library curriculum chair, which means I oversee the 10 elementary libraries in my district. Um, our district, Westside Community School District, has been um, heavy on technology for the 11 years and even before I was in the district. I believe they became a one-to-one -one, um, laptop district in 2007. Um, and then we became a one-to-one -one K-12 district in 2013 or 14. So um, they've always been super supportive of technology, which has kind of led me down the path that I have and why I kind of use Canva, um, because I have access to great resources from my district. Um, so a little background on my specific intro to Canva. Um, the Nebraska Educational Technology Association hosts 
a spring conference every year, and it is the biggest education conference we have in the state. Um, and at this conference, they have all these different speakers, and I cannot tell you which session I went to because it's two days of amazing learning. Um, but in 2016, I went to NIDA, and I heard about Canva, and I was like, oh, this is cool. It's like a free tool I can use to create cool posters and things like that. So mm -hmm. I began by creating a poster for student tech teams, which I will show you here shortly. Um, and I thought it was really great. Uh, at that time, I was also working on my master's through the University of Nebraska at Kearney in instructional technology and leadership. And rather than doing like a typed report or a PowerPoint or kind of your basic presentation tools, I decided to, well, I have this Canva account. Let me create work and assignments on Canva. So I used Canva a lot through my master's program. Um, then in my school life, I started using it to make flyers. We do one school, one book um, in my building. So I'd make flyers kind of announcing big events happening around that. Um, I'd also do it for our book fairs that we have every fall and spring. And then I like to say I went a little crazy. So this is my current, oh, sorry, go back. This is my first Canva creation that I created in um, the fall of 2016. Uh, my school was the Paddock Road Pandas at the time. And so I thought it was a cute little panda eraser. Mm -hmm. um, and this was just to announce something cool that we were going to be developing in our building. Um, funny fact, I never actually got my tech squad coming because lots of things come up. And, but it was cute. I made it. I love it. <laughs> but I never actually had a tech squad with students. Someday, maybe. Um, but this is what I was gonna show you. This is a glimpse of what my Canva looks like now. Um, you can see I'm just scrolling and scrolling through my homepage of all the content that I've created over the past seven years. I do, from time to time, try to go through and delete things that I'm not using. Um, and one tool I'm actually not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about because I haven't done it yet, is organizing my content in Canva into different folders and projects. Um, mm -hmm. It would probably be super beneficial for me to do that, but that's one of those like daunting tasks that I don't wanna really tackle until it's like a winter break or summer break. Um, yeah. so that's, that's a future Kelly problem, not a today, <laughs> not a today Kelly problem. So. Um, but yeah, I use Canva all the time for basically everything I want to create um, is on Canva. So um, just to background information, I don't know how familiar people are with Canva, but there's lots of different accounts that you can set up. Um, mm -hmm. There is a basic free account, uh, and this is what I used the most um, as I got started with Canva is just free. And then there are like pro things that you don't have access to on the free account. Um, but there's still plenty of resources available if you are just using Canva um, free. They have since, um, in the past few years, they've adapted and they have Canva Education, which is also free for teachers and school districts in the K-12 education. Um, and it is allows um, teachers and people in within a school district to access everything in Canva all the pro content for free um, in addition to some of the cool apps that they've added. If you're not in the education system, there is Canva Pro. Um, it is $14.99 a month and that allows one person um, access to all of the pro content. They also have Canva Teams for $29.99 a month and that allows five people access to the pro content. Um, and I'll kind of talk about this again, but there are some workarounds on how you access that pro content. Um, not that Canva wants me to tell you about those, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve that I will share with you. Um, and just for this presentation, I started looking at um, the other accounts, so I don't know much about them, but I did see that they have Canva for campus um, mm -hmm. and the price depends on the student body size. And they also have Canva nonprofit. And I couldn't really find anything on it other than like reach out to us if you're a nonprofit organization that wants to use Canva. So maybe it's a cutting you a deal or maybe you can get it free. Yeah, and, something yeah. maybe similar to the EDU one or something or yeah. some sort of a yeah, discount. I, yeah, the, like, um, I don't know if it's different library systems able to access the education side, even though they're not like a typical school district or system. So I know there's Kind of some workarounds in that one. Um, so today I'm just going to kind of cover four different main areas. I'm going to talk about using um, Canva templates, 
talk about the text, um, give you a whole bunch of different design tips that um, will make your life easier as you create things, and then just share some inspiration from my content. Um, and speaking about my content, I just have to do a couple disclaimers. Um, I have to share that 75% of the things that I've created and done on Canva, I did without Canva education. Um, so I joined Canva before it was even a thing, and I did join with my district email, and um, a couple of years go by and I'm still using Canva, and Canva education comes out. I'm like, oh yeah, I just have to check this box. I'm an educator, great, I have access to the Canva education side of things. But then I started like working with my colleagues, and I saw that they had like all these cool graphics and features that I didn't have access to, and I was like, wait, something's not right with my account. Like I thought I had Canva education. Turns out I didn't. Um, so in the meantime of not having Canva education, I would sign up for like the trial of Canva and you get one free month. And then before they charge my credit card, I'd cancel it really quick. So I'd create a whole bunch of content and then cancel it so I didn't get charged. Um, mm -hmm. That was one kind of workaround that I did. Uh, and you can buy individual items or graphics. So there was at one point a poster. I really wanted this background. I paid a dollar for it, which was not a big deal. Um, but then I went to contact Canva about, okay, I really want to get my education um, account verified with yours. And I'm going to jump down to bullet point three, Canva's contact support. I haven't worked with them since, so I hope they have improved, but it was terrible. I think I spent maybe six to eight weeks going back and forth with Canva's tech support or support, just trying to verify my account. Um, I would email things and then I would hear back from one person and then I didn't hear back from someone else. And then um, it was just kind of a pain in the butt. So just warning, Canvas support may not be the best. Um, hopefully they've improved. It's been a year since I've reached out to them. So maybe things are better. Um, but definitely keep working with them to make sure you get that if you want that education yeah. account or whatever oh, the nonprofit yeah. one is, definitely. Yeah. Um, and I think what ended up helping me is I stopped working with the initial person I was talking to and I completed like a whole new help ticket essentially. And I yeah. explained everything, I sent documentation um, because you do have to provide like proof that you work in your school or your district um, when signing up without a district account. So definitely, yeah, do the, it was worth it, but a pain. Um, and then funny enough, after I worked with Canva about a month or two later, my district um, did like a district account with them. So then it, it, I automatically was able to get that content. So um, some of you might not even have to do that if your district does it for you, which would be. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Look into that if you, yeah, to see you would pay for yeah. that. Um, but yeah. like you said, I mean, your first point here, I think that 75% of content was done before you even had that. There is a lot in there. You don't have to pay. There, all the free options are great. I mean, I used the free for 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 a few years before our organization. Yeah, our commission did because other people started getting into using it and saying we could use a little bit more, some more, you know, bells and whistles on some of our yeah. things. Like, all right, yeah. and we looked into what it would be, and we have um, I'm not exactly sure which kind of account we have, but we have one where we have one of the pro something. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it is expensive, but. Um, I even really considered, um, I oversee our budgets as an, our elementary library, and I was like, it is worth the money if I have to pay for a pro version. Because mm -hmm. of the content you get to me, it was worth every penny. And I think it will continue to be worth the money because Canva is always expanding, uh, which oh, yeah. kind of goes to the next one. Like I am nowhere close to being an expert on Canva because they keep adding all these amazing features. Um, it's hard to keep up with. So if you do and can work out the budget for it, I highly recommend um, securing that pro content if you can. So um, I still watch YouTube videos and I'll go on TikTok and watch a couple clips or even just look online um, to always learn new things. But um, I have a three year old and a five month old at home. So it's kind of hard to keep up with all the cool things. So every Every few months, I'll check out what's going on in Canva and try to buff up on my skills. So not an expert, but I love Canva enough, and that's why I'm really excited to share about it with you guys today. So we'll jump right in. Um, so my first kind of tip for everyone, whether they're a beginner or um, kind of working their way through or know Canva really well, is to start with a template as a starting point. Um, if you don't have any design background or maybe it's just not like your forte, 
Canva has everything pretty much pre-made for you. So you can find a template and literally just pop in your text that you want and pop in an image and you're done. You don't have to mess with it, um, which I think is a great place if you're just starting out or if you run out of time or don't have um, any time to do it. So some top search ideas that I use on Canva um, when I'm looking for a specific template. Um, again, I'm an educator, so I start with education presentation. I search worksheets, calendars, um, library, reading, school, infograph, um, and specific themes when I wanna find a template. So for example, my building's getting ready for our next one school, one book event, um, and our school will be reading the Lemonade War together. So when I'm working on um, creating content for our big events, I'm like searching the word lemonade, lemonade stand, lemon, and that is my theme. And then I can find a whole bunch of content and posters, um, videos, graphics that will match my theme of whatever I'm creating. So that's um, a helpful little tip there. Also at the top of the homepage on Canva, they have Design Spotlight. Um, and that will actually show you all their top products and their options. It's also on the scroll bar um, when you first open it in, um, but it's kind of easier to see if it's a list. So that's where you can find things like you can make logos, you can make memes, you can make video intros. Um, I think the list is pretty endless on what you can find as a template. Uh, just yesterday, I had a coworker email me and she had like a really cute signature and I was like, oh, I bet I could do that in Canva. So I hopped on Canva, I went to their search bar and I searched email signature and about 50 different options popped up as a graphic for uh, an email signature that I could just save as an image and pop into my Google account. So now I have a cute little intro or um, message at the bottom of my email, it has a picture of me and my contact information. So using a template is a great place to start. Once you get more comfortable with it, then you can kind of adapt and tweak. Um, maybe you start with one template and you fix it or you combine different templates. Um, that would be like the next kind of level in my eyes um, of how to use them. And then if you get really fancy, you can just start from scratch. But I don't do that often because I get bogged down of like, looking at all the cool graphics and fonts and images, and then I just spend so much time making it look cool that I could have just used a template and been done with it. So um, yeah, so that's my first area is just to make sure that you um, check the templates and start there and then adapt as needed. Uh, the next area of tips is using text and their fonts and features. Um, my first tip on that one is to customize with the effects. Um, so once you have your text box selected, you can um, outline, you can bold. Um, they have a new one, I forget what it's called, but um, it's like an outline of the words and then you can change the inside as well. Um, and it also works well if you have a font that won't bold, you can um, outline it in black and so then it makes it actually a bold font, even if that's not an option. My second tip is to randomly scroll through the fonts or search. Um, if you're familiar with Canva, you know there are a lot of fonts. I think I saw somewhere online that there are over a thousand. So wow. it is super overwhelming when you're trying to find a font. So I play this fun little game when I'm trying to choose something new. And I go to fonts and I will randomly scroll and then I force myself to stop. And then I force myself to choose one of the fonts that I see on my screen. Because otherwise I'll just sit and keep scrolling and scrolling and try to find something. So it's a fun little game to play. Um, and the other thing is I'll search like if I'm specifically looking for handwriting where I want block letters or bold. Um, you can also again using keywords. So um, I think I was doing like a project on winter or like national parks kind of thing. And I was just searching random words, keywords that like made connections. And I figured out there was a font called Alaska. And I was like, oh, perfect, I'll use that font. So you can use that search bar as well to choose um, different fonts. Um, my tip I remind myself all the time is to make sure that your patrons can actually read the font. I have little kids and I love cursive and I have to remind myself on the daily that they can't actually read the cursive. Huh. Um, so like right up here where I have text tips, they they might be able to read that once they're in like third, fourth grade, but um, making sure that what you select is actually something that people can read. 
I also um, kind of going with that, I try to balance out my fonts. Um, and you can see on this page, I have like kind of a thicker, bold font, and then I have a more thin, natural font. Um, so I kind of do that. I will also try to do like a script font with a plain font. Um, and that's just kind of uh, pleasing on the eye. And one thing to consider when you're balancing out those fonts is not to get too crazy with your fonts. Um, I would say one, two, maybe three different fonts tops per page or per, per presentation or content that you're creating. Because if you're using too many fonts, then it just becomes distracting. Yeah. So balancing those out and kind of being selective. And when you're being selective, something that I like to do is choose a brand font for important items. So for example, my library signage, um, I created my signs on Canva and I make sure that every single sign um, for shelf location in things around the library is all the exact same font. So it's consistent um, throughout the library. So it's kind of like my brand font. Um, and then the last one for my tech tips is just most importantly, like have fun with it. Um, they have amazing fonts. So this next slide is just some of my favorite fonts that I use um, frequently. I go back to, and it kind of changes because once I use Bobby Jones for a month straight for different things, I get bored of it and I'll find something else. So um, these are just some of my go-to fonts that I love on Canva. And we should mention here while you're talking about like that previous screen saying the different fonts you used for that particular slide, uh, this presentation is done in Canva. Yes. Um, and um, everyone will have access to these slides afterwards with, with the archive recording. So um, if you see things on here that look interesting to you, uh, don't worry about trying to, try to scribble down everything that's written on the slides. We will have, give you a link to these um, afterwards along with the show recording. Yep. And thank you for that. And just thinking about it too, like I did not create this presentation. This is a template that I just found the slide and I'm popping my information in. So I did tweak a little bit when we get further on, but all of this is pre-created by them. So it's it's fabulous. Um, I will say one kind of downside to Canva, and it depends on what you use as a platform um, in your um, environment for library, but we use Google. And a lot of times I will take my content and try to match or embed it into Google items. And it's really great and easy to use that, but the fonts don't necessarily match up. So obviously if Canva has over a thousand fonts, you're not gonna see that on Google, but just know that if you're a type A librarian like me that loves things to match and um, look nice, sometimes you have to narrow your results down on Canva based on what else you can access on Google and things like that. But they are getting better. Um, some of them are on Google now. So going on to the next slide. Okay, and so this is where um, I'm gonna start diving into some of the kind of heavy design tips on creating your content. Um, the videos on here go through really fast, so um, don't panic if you didn't catch everything in the video, because um, you'll have access to this that you can go back, watch, and pause. Um, but I've broken it down into first formatting tips, so how do you format the page and content? So the first thing I always have turned on in my Canva is the rulers um, to guide my design. So to do this, I'm gonna start this video over. It is just a simple go to file, then you go to view settings and then show rulers. And so this will show you the rulers on the side. And as I'm moving content around, whether it's the text box or image, I'm looking at the side to see where it hits on the ruler. So that way I can align things um, easier and just have a visual aspect of where it is on the page. They also have the option that you can show the margins um, and the print bleed for your content that you're creating. Another design item, and I think this is a game changer, is to lock the items that you don't want to move. So this is a picture where there's all these different elements on the poster. And when I wanna go type something, or maybe I wanna move the text box, I end up grabbing the background and it moves and I don't want that to move. I want uh, that to so stay. frustrating. Which thing did I actually grab? It's the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're grabbing or what you're selecting. So if you have a page that's kind of crazy and wild like this, you can select the items and I highlight all of them that I don't want to move. And then you just go to the three dots and you click lock items. So then I can easily move the letters or the text boxes or the images, and I don't have to worry about those background layers moving ever. So um, it's helpful 
um, when you have lots of different layers or lots of different aspects to a design. So this one's a game changer, in my opinion. Our next one is just to easily move items around. So again, after maybe I've locked the background, I'm gonna group items that I wanna move together. So a text box and maybe the graphic behind, I'm gonna put them together and group them as one. That way I don't have to match or move two different individual items around. I'm just moving one big clump. Um, and this is great once I set, like if I'm working on a newsletter and I have like a text box, an image, um, a little graphic, I'm gonna group everything together and then I can arrange it where I want. The nice thing about grouping too is you can also adjust the size of everything at once. So once you have it together in like your right layout, you group it and then you can expand or make it smaller to fit content around your designs, which is really helpful. I need to remember this tip because it's great and I don't ever use it, <laughs> but it's to, um, this is how you can easily make items um, evenly spaced and aligned. So um, when I was showing you and talking about the rulers, I usually check the side of like, where is it at? How far away it is? And you know, you get those little sensors and um, messages from Canva like, oh, it's 0.8 away from each other. Well, I don't have to do that. Canva will do it for me if I just remember it. Um, and to do this, what you do is you highlight all of your items. So in this graphic, I'm grabbing all of my different shapes. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to align and you can choose where you want your graphics. I wanted them aligned in the middle of the page. And then once I do that, I still have them highlighted. And then I go back into, I'm going to space evenly and then you can click tidy up. And then Canva will automatically make them evenly spaced out. And this works for um, images, text, um, all of those things you can align and space evenly with just a couple clicks. Uh, another design tip um, is to narrow your results for the different elements. So now we're moving into like adding the elements in, which is one of the sections on Canva. Um, and this one should come no surprise to a librarian is use your filters <laughs> and narrow your results. So you can narrow your results from different shapes. You can do free version versus pro. So let's say you don't have access to Canva Pro. When you're looking for a picture, you can automatically filter out all those pro versions. So it's just showing you what you have access to. Um, I found that helpful when I did not have Canva education. You can uh, filter out from static images versus animated images. Um, and you can also filter out by color, which is another really cool feature. So definitely using those features when you're trying to find elements, because again, sort of with fonts, I find that a lot of times looking at elements, I get stuck because there's so many options. Um, I don't know which one to pick, but if I narrow down to what exactly I want, it helps a little bit more. Um, this one is another cool feature, I'm going to pause the video on this one, about how you can match your graphics and images by using the filter option. So um, on this example, I have a little caterpillar picture, and I really like that green color. And um, this is for graphics. I don't, it, I don't think it works for um, images um, because you have to copy the color code. So up at the top, I go and find what color I have selected and I'm just going to copy that code. And then when I'm looking for a new element, for example, I'm gonna look for bugs, over in the filter icon, I'm gonna go over to the color, uh, it's kind of cut off there, but the rainbow option there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paste that color code in from my frog or my caterpillar and apply. And then what it's gonna show me is only results that have that same exact color code. So this is great if you have like a brand color or maybe a school mascot with orange, you can make sure that the content you create or what you're looking for is um, the same color, which I find is kind of a cool feature. Uh, another design element that I, I use often is the magic recommends. So when I find a graphic I like, for example, the balloons, when I go to magic recommends, it's gonna show me similar um, graphics that match that kind of style, like watercolor or something like that. 
um, and it also will help you find exactly the same content. So for example, if I wanted to create a poster and I'm using like a letter A, but it looks like a dinosaur, and I also need the letter F, I can go into Magic Recommends and I can search for the next letter that matches that exact same um, font style as a graphic. But it mm -hmm. also works if I can't find that letter, so to speak, I can go to, and it's kind of really small here, you go back, up here whenever you're on magic recommends you can go to view more and then there's the creator's name mm. so you can click the creator's name and then it will take you basically to their library of content so you can find everything that that creator has made and then it obviously um, most of it will be like matching or similar styles on that one so you can search by their creations which is really cool and you can also do this um, graphics and templates all have different creators that you can track down. Um, some of their really new features, and I love this one. So if you have Photoshop or you're an expert in that, that's great. Canva is even better. Uh, it's also easier is they have the new uh, remove background feature. And now this is only available on like pro or education. So when you have a picture, so I have a picture of this lovely chef holding her little nice cookie, but I don't want the kitchen or anything in the background. So all I have to do is click on the image, go to edit, and then I go background remover and it will automatically take the background away and just leave her as an icon, which is great. I've also heard, I have not tried, that it works for videos as well. Um, the example I saw was a person dancing and they were able to remove the background and it was just like a person dancing with nothing behind them. Um, and this is great when you want to layer features and things like that. So I knew when I um, created my email signature yesterday, I wanted like a background and then my picture. Um, and I had a picture, it was a selfie of me in the car and I didn't want like the car seats and the rear view mirror behind me. So I just removed yes. it back and I popped it on um, a little circle. So then no one knew it was a car selfie. So it was great. And just makes it look that much more professional. It does, it does, yeah. Photo, yeah. I don't ever take professional photos of myself. I probably should have something done, but yeah. So car selfie for the win. And then I just went into Canva and uh, removed the background. Hmm. Um, these are newer features and um, I'm this is where I'm gonna say I'm not an expert but there is some really cool things that you can do with AI in the graphics and the element side there's also a whole AI side to like the text I'm not familiar with it um, maybe someday but they have this thing called magic edit it is not perfect but it is pretty cool if you have time to like play around and try it out um, just know that students don't have access to this if you have like an education account, um, but we educators or pro version does. So I found this really cool picture of just like a desk um, and I'm going to click on the image and then go to edit and you're going to start by selecting your brush size and then on your image you're going to highlight where you want a change. So I adjusted that and then over here I'm going to highlight where I want to add something to my image. I go to continue and then I'm just gonna describe what I want. So I have this desk and I want to add a stack of books to the desk. And it does take some time, but what it's gonna do is it's going to pull resources and then it's gonna give you four different options of what you're looking for. And then you can test out which image you like and it will automatically like pop that into your picture once you select. So should be done here in a second. Dun, dun, dun. So then I have four books and then I can just test out which stack of books that I like and I can add it in, which is kind of a fun little feature. I think also it works better if it's like a smaller item versus a large item, um, which is kind of going to be the same for this next AI kind of tip they have. Um, they have something called Magic Eraser. Um, so I have this picture and I have something I don't want in the image. Um, kind of similar. I'm going to click on the image, then I go to magic eraser, and then all I do is highlight the area I want to remove. So in this example, again, you'll get this slideshow, so it might be easier then. I just highlighted, there's a little dinosaur in the background. I don't want the dinosaur there. I highlight it and then 
Canva and AI does its thing, and then the um, dinosaur magically gone. It is by no means perfect. Like you can tell, it's still sort of tell something was there. Um, but I think it's kind of crazy. The example I saw um, when I was trying to pick up some new tips was um, a couple on a pier and there were some people in the background that they wanted erased. So they just popped it in magic eraser um, and they like erased whole people and it worked pretty well um, and they were gone. So then it was like a nicer picture. I did try this with um, a larger object. So it was like a family and then there was like a car in the driveway. And I tried to race the car and it was pretty big and it, it didn't show up, it didn't work great. Um, so it's not perfect, but you know, with Canva always changing and adding new features and AI kind of taking off, I think it's only going to improve from there. So kind of a cool feature on the design element. Um, and then moving on to some apps and some things that you can do with the apps. So on the very bottom of your menu when you're creating content, there is apps and they have more apps than I can count. Um, some of the ones that I use frequently are Audio, Giphy, YouTube, Drive, and, and then there's more. So my Britney Spears at the front um, of this presentation I found from using Giphy in the app section. Um, and I'm gonna talk about some specific apps that are really great. Um, the first one I like is called Mockup. So if you ever have to do any marketing or um, selling of content, maybe you have a new website you want to show off, um, they have what's called Mockup. So all you do is search the app and call Mockup, and then you click on it. And then they have all of these free like templates that you can use that are basically pictures designed with a frame inside. So then mm -hmm. all you have to do is choose which image you want and then drag and drop your own picture in. So like for example, I really like, I haven't done it yet, but like these laptops, I could see myself using all the time um, when I'm giving my students directions on their laptop, like here's what you need to do. And then I can just drop a screenshot of their directions into the graphic, um, which is nice. And then again, if you have apparel that you wanna share, and so you can also do that in the mockups as well. Um, moving on. Oh, this is, did I skip one? Nope. Okay. So the next one, again, this is a new one that I just learned. It's really cool and it's translate. And I was so excited and I called my library friend. I was like, oh my God, did you know Canva will automatically translate your documents for her? And she's like, yeah, Kelly, I did. And she kind of burst. <laughs> so I don't know if you've heard about this. I was super excited. Not everybody um, has encountered everything in there. That's really, like you said at the beginning, there's so much in here. Yeah. yeah. So Canva will instantly translate your documents. Um, I talked to my ELL teacher and she says, I'm pretty sure it's aligned with Google. So like you can't find every language, but you can find um, a ton of different languages. Um, and I do know that they limit you on how many free translations you get a month, but it's simple. Again, all you go is um, you go into apps, you go to translate. Um, and I think it does it by page. So I have a little slideshow over here. I chose to translate it into French. And then I go ahead and click translate and then it will automatically do its magic. And then my text is now in French. So I thought this would be great for like newsletters or letters that need to go out to our patrons. You can easily transition to different languages. Um, and it, I check Spanish. I'm not an expert in Spanish. I know a little bit and it seemed pretty accurate to me. So um, definitely a really cool feature that I don't think people know about. So definitely use that one. Um, and then some last like miscellaneous design tips, um, just like in Google Docs and any Word document, you can find and replace the text, um, just selecting it and find file, find and replace. So I use this when I create calendars on Canva rather than having to go to each page and change the year or things like that. You can easily just change the text on the page into what you need, save you some time. Um, design elements, uh, saving your favorite content. I've just started to dabble in this, but if you have like a graphic that you really like, you can select it and favorite it with a star. Same thing for um, pictures. You can do it with templates and then you just save which items you like the best. Um, I can't tell you where they disappear to. I maybe should look into that, but you can favorite your favorite items. And I think it's a folder. Um, and then you can always go back to the same content. The one thing I wish you could do, but you can't, I wish you could favorite fonts. So that way you can go back to like, for example, when I talked about brand fonts, I wish you could go back and like 
always remember what your brand font is, which you can do in brand fonts in the brand icon, which I haven't experienced a ton with it, but you can't favorite the fonts, which I wish you could. Um, oh, I already did that one. Let's go back, sorry about that. Um, keyboard shortcuts, This, um, these are kind of fun. So one of them is when you are editing in Canva, um, you don't have to go to elements and then text and add a text box. Anytime you're working, if you just type the letter T in your screen, um, as long as nothing's selected, you can automatically get a text box. Um, and then they have these fun ones during presentations that you can use. Uh, there is B for blur and it will blur your screen. <laughs> Uh, you can do D for drool. You can do C for confetti. Um, o for bubbles. Q uh, for quiet. And then you can also set a timer by pushing a number. So, for example, if I want a timer for a minute, I tap the one and then I can go ahead and I have my timer and then I just have to push start and it will start counting down for me so this um the timer feature is one that i need to remember when i do some of my class activities um mm -hmm. and have it posted up for because it's a great visual for students to have um some time timer going down so kind of cool shortcuts for your keyboard mm -hmm. and i don't really, i don't think it matters if you're on mac or pc it will always do these things so those we have a question those those shortcuts is this something like you just did them here live like you had yes. to, you know, use them while you were had your slides there kind of behind. Is this something that you could put into your presentations too, as like it would automatically happen? Um, I believe okay. once you go, yeah, I think once you're in, um, because right now I'm in the presenter mode, I'm right. um, it's already there. So I have to be in the presenter mode to use them, but mm -hmm. I think they're automatically there regardless of like the template you use. I think it works for everything i have not tried it with posters yet but i do know for um presentations it does but we could maybe test it out with something else today see if it works so that's a great question i like those in more interactive type things the slides and presentations are not so yeah. static and the sound effects yeah. did come through is very um nicely too so that's cool <laughs> yes well and if we have time i'll show an example of um kind of like a guide i use for one of my projects i do with uh, my fourth graders and the way I was able to like add text and add graphics and add images, um, and I'll probably add the timer this year, is just making it more engaging because it's not just a plain old like presentation. It's more um, exciting for the kids. I used to really like Prezi back in the day. Um, oh yeah. And I thought, you know that was Prezi was my jam before Canva was, but you know <laughs> that kind of changed completely. So like this is my replacement and making kind of the boring stuff more engaging. So. That one's on there. Um, and then my last, I believe, design tip on uh, just miscellaneous is how you can share your content. You can do the typical things, share as PDF, PNG, JPEG, um, and download them directly to your device. Um, you can also go to the more option and you can share directly to Google Drive, Microsoft, social media, um, network, uh, social networking, messaging, QR codes. They also have the option for LMS systems that you can export to. So you really um, have tons of options of how you want your content shared. Um, if you are someone that uses Google Drive, uh, one thing that's a really nice and handy feature is you can export directly to Google Classroom if you're um, using that or into Drive. So let's say I had this presentation and I was finished with it. I could export it to my Google Drive and then I still should be able to edit the text and move the text around so it's still um, editable once you get it into Drive, um, which is really great. I have to be honest, I'm not super familiar with doing that because my district for um, safety and privacy reasons, we have Canva as a district, but it is not linked with our Google accounts. So mm -hmm. in order for me to get it to Drive, I have to like download it to my computer and then re-upload it into Google Drive. Um, it's just an extra step. It's still doable, but um, yeah. if you have them connected, it would make things a little bit smoother. So, um, and one of the ways I really like it is that template link, which I have a whole bunch here. 
um, I will show you. And that basically is like Google's force make a copy. When you create a template link and you share that link with someone, it automatically makes them their own copy that they can then edit and adapt as needed. So speaking of templates, here are just some idea pages of things that I've created on Canva. Um, and when you get a presentation, or when you get this presentation, you will have access to all of these different templates if you're interested. Um, I'm very much in the mindset as a librarian, like I'm not gonna be the keeper of information and the keeper of content. I'm very much like, here, have what you want. Um, let's work together. I've made this, like I'm gonna save you some work. Have it, I'm, I'm not gonna keep it, so. Uh, there's some, like a little graph infographic I created to share different highlights of what's being checked out in my school, who's checked out the most. Um, this is an elementary library menu of services. So we share this out at the beginning of the year, just a fun way of saying like, here's what your elementary library program will do. Um, and this, again, this was a template that I used from like a pizza restaurant, and then I just adapted the words and the graphics to fit what I needed. And there's a newsletter that we share out with our parents at our curriculum nights. Um, and then I have um, just some fun little library student statements that I have here. Um, fun fact about us in Nebraska in my specific school district, we um, I teach seven classes a day, kindergarten through sixth grade with one plan period. And we also give grades every quarter to our students. Um, so that's really fun sometimes. And <laughs> Uh, uh, we try to share and just advocate for our program and what we're doing to show that like, hey, we're teaching content, we're teaching kids skills. So this is something I create and we share out every quarter with um, everyone in our district. Um, so this is the student I can statement. So for example, this quarter, our kids were working on gathering and organizing information and they're also working on citing their sources. So pretty similar across the board, but it's a great tool and just makes it cute to share out with people. Um, research organizers, I've kind of um, taken this up as my new hobby. Um, I, yeah, I use teachers, pay teachers, but they're always not exactly what I want. So I've been able to like kind of guide myself like, oh, I like this piece. And then I go into um, Canva just to create all of my worksheets that I want to use with my students. So for example, um, over here, my fourth graders do a Nebraska history project. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to just create a timeline and all of these different pages. And then what I love about this is I'm able to make it specifically match my databases. So we use Pebble Go and Pebble Go Next, and I can ensure like the research organizer matches the heading of the source of information I want my students using, um, which I have found really helpful um, when guiding them in their research process. And then again, I throw in some cute graphics because kids get excited about what it looks like. and um, you'll notice these two are pretty similar. So once I find something that works or something that I like, like this Nebraska one is for fourth grade, and the natural or uh, national parks is for fifth grade. I just copy the same thing and I adapt it. You know, less work, it works already, um, and I make my life easier. So here's another example of a second grade research project that we use. And then I have first graders. Um, we use dinosaurs. They absolutely love the dinosaur project. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like I said earlier, I use it for my signage in library. So um, my lovely bathroom pass over here, my kids are always like, where's the bathroom pass? I'm like, it's the one with the toilet paper. And they love that one. <laughs> so I'll just print these um, and I have like a little badge that I use. Um, we don't have, unfortunately, assistance in our library in my school district for elementary. So uh, book displays are uh, a thing that I get to if I get to. It's not a priority, but Canva's made it so I can do it. So here's a quick one, hungry for a good book. And all I did was I searched graphics of images, threw them on a poster, printed it, and then I pulled a whole bunch of books that were just about food or had food in them. Um, so it makes that kind of display manageable in my setting. Um, I started creating in Canva our um, donation um, labels rather than ordering them from like Demco or other library vendors. Um, and I just print them out on mailing labels. So this is our foundation one we got a grant for a few years ago. Um, we also got support from the Special Olympics. So these I just created in Canva and then they went into every book that was purchased with that grant. Um, I have little baskets and um, these are just signs that remind my students where to go. Um, and this actual image before on the background 
is the actual sticker that I purchased from Demco. And then I just changed the transparency to make it lighter. And then I popped my letter on top with a description of like what goes in that basket. Um, and then this one down here, I use, um, I have a TV in the library and I will use this as like a slideshow on the TV. So I have genres, I have events, um, and also put all of the new books that we have in the library. So, and again, all of these, when you get this, you can click on them or the word template, and then you'll have access to use them if you would like. So um, we have, I was gonna show you a quick tutorial, but um, I think maybe we should just jump right into questions if there are some. Sure, yeah. Um, we definitely have um, plenty of time. Um, it, so yeah, leave your screen up there in case people want to see things. Uh, you can show. Um, yeah, oh, here's slide. Gonna, do the. Go yeah, ahead. I, now that I remember, I was going to show. And now that I'm on Canva page, um, I was going to show that presentation that I had talked about with my fourth graders. So yeah. again, if I have any questions, get them into the questions section in the GoToWebinar interface, and we'll make sure we get everybody's questions answered. So anything you wanted to see more about, anything you were confused about, anything you were wondering if you could do with Canva. Um, or if you've used it, you know, share some of your ideas or tips or, or things that you've used it for. We'd love to hear what other people are doing as well. Um, so yeah. get typed into the question section there. Um, this was that example I talked about with like fourth graders. Again, I did not make this. I just popped pictures in. Um, but if I go to present mode, uh, and I'm going to go to present to full screen. Um, so when my kids come into class, I have it all set up and it's got like their cool survival music. Um, and this one, uh, again, you learn new things. I was able to record myself. It's vacation time. And I'm giving directions to my students about what they're doing. Of a lifetime. Think about where your dream vacation would be and pack your bags. What are 10 specific items that you will take on your vacation? Now, I will tell you, this was kind of toys, entertainment, oh, still talking. or essential items to make the best vacation Oh, it's because it's a video on there. Um, I will tell you on this one, I had to kind of do a little hack where I recorded myself, but it had my face and I didn't want my face. So it's mm -hmm. hiding behind these graphics here. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I didn't actually Something want it. Yeah. So like over here, I have a little like green circle. That's actually me just holding a piece of construction paper over my camera, but you can embed videos. And I just use this as a guide. Like every time they came to class, here's what you're supposed to be working on day one. Um, here's what you're working on day two and just kind of got them a little bit more engaged and this is where i would definitely put a timer in in the future and then someone asked that question about like let's see if i go to poster if i can i present a poster if i go to public view link and let's create one real quick okay so if i paste that over here Um, it does not look like those shortcuts do work, so it must just be with presentations. So bubbles and those things do not work. So only with presentations. In the home page. And like I said, I love to use Canva for everything. <laughs> All those things. So I use it for my kids, I use it for school. I use it for author visits, our annual reports I started making in there, so. Lots of great things. Mm -hmm. And we'll go ahead and. I know I have, like I said, we here at the at the Library Commission, they got an account, but I had had my own personal account that I was using to start with that I just a few years ago started using because I talked about Canva and presentations of my own about here's some cool free things you can use for doing, you know, if you are not a graphic designer by trade, by training, and you do not have the um, uh, budget to hire a graphic designer to do something you can be a graphic designer with canva <laughs> um, yeah and and i still um have my own personal account that i use for things um for myself that i um that i would um, do just fun things so um it is yeah. i yeah i'm a huge yes i don't know if i'd be call myself a canva holic yet <laughs> but yes. definitely a lover of it yeah yeah um, so we do have a um, comment if anybody has any questions, go ahead and get them in the questions section, um, and we will answer them. We're, even though we, the show officially goes till 11 a.m. Central Time, um, we'll go as long as it takes for all of you to have your questions answered, anything you wanted to talk about or share uh, before we wrap things up. 
Um, will I will share another hack really quick. And this is like an unofficial hack Canva would not want me telling you about. Um, <laughs> but the way I started using Canva education was I had a, a colleague in another school district that she, and she had her Canva account set up. You can create a team mm. and she added me to her team. And anytime I was on her team creating content, mm -hmm. I had access to the pro version content, wow. even though my personal Canva did not have pro. So if so you, you know someone, if you wanted to do like something, a, a, a joint account with other uh, yes. library locations or something, you could have a team. Yeah. That you, I think where you can have like five people on a team. It's one of those official things Canva probably doesn't want me to tell you, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's just how it works. Yeah. Um, I'm not comment. Someone said a color code search, very neat to learn. So they were really excited about that, the color code searching. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that earlier. Um, so we do have a couple of questions that have come in here. Um, someone wants to know how do you get the timer off of a presentation once the countdown is done? Um, there Maybe. is a little subtract button. So I can actually, I'll share my screen again. And yeah. Um, I can do that. You should be able to re yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I go to, if I go back here to, um, you need to show your screen again though, because you did stop doing that. Oh, okay. My In, uh, go to webinar. Okay. There we go. Yep. Okay. Click the wrong button, that's why. Okay, so I go to present, um, and let's go a couple slides in. So if I did a timer for one minute up here in the corner, um, I have to start the time, and then when it's done, I can minimize it right here, and then it'll disappear. So, um, and there's a volume button, maybe it makes sound, I've, I haven't tried that one out, but yeah, you just minimize over here in the corner to- it Minimize the actually delete, removes it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. So have a timer, a minute. Um, another question or we'll comment some of lots of thank yous coming in. Great. Uh, these tips are so helpful. You're welcome. Uh, can you make a survey in Canva? Is there a way that you know or that you've done to do surveys? Um, also, I, I have not. If I go, I think they just have like, if I search survey, they have like paper copies. I have not seen a digital one. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So yes, if you're talking about a template for something that you would hand out. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you could also, I'm trying to like think of workarounds. If you create one of these, uh, you wouldn't be able to adapt it into Google. So I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So there are tests. Survey is a template category, obviously. Or yeah. A lot of them, a lot of templates in there for surveys, definitely. Yeah. All right, guess more thank yous. This was very useful. Must leave to go to staff service day now. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. That sounds better than I'm going to go to sixth grade lunch duty and oh. <laughs> cafeteria for two hours. So I think I'd rather a staff meeting. <laughs> um, I, another uh, com question came in. Um, I use Canva often for newsletters, flyers, uh, et cetera. Um, have you ever tried using Canva for brochures? Does it have a brochure? Um, I have, I don't even know if I can spell brochure. They do have templates. I have not used them for it before. Oh, nice. Um, I, yeah, See, that's the same thing I'm always needing. Like if you're gonna, like a trifold thing or whatever, fitting stuff onto each part. Yes, that looks gorgeous. <laughs> They, and I know one thing people have complained about, and I haven't tried it in a while to see if they've fixed, um, thinking about brochures, is bookmarks. These are like really great. But when it comes to like printing them, I've heard it's kind of a hassle because it's like, doesn't adjust to the page. Um, Maybe after you download it, you might have to do some tweaking. Yeah, like it'll just download it as a PNG and you won't actually have access to like where to cut. You have to like adapt it or print so many to a page and things like that. But they do have brochures. So yes, there is the brochure template in there that you can use to very easily uh, to answer yeah. your question from the audience, yeah. Yep, and if you are not sure like what they have, they have over here Design Spotlight, I kind of mentioned, it goes through like all the different things um, that you can create, which is really cool. 
And I saw there was when you were doing this, so there's something for posters and things too. This is something I, I know I have a, a friend and colleague who did use Canva to make um, the design for giant, like oh, those floor to like, like five, six feet tall pull up poster signs that you'd like those portable signs for like conferences or just anywhere. And she did the design in Canva for that and then just got the, the graphic file from here to send to the company to make this their big you know, permanent sign um, advertising their library or whatever. So it can be, you know, we're talking about little things like brochures and flyers, but you can even use it to do big things. You get that graphic, that file, it can then be used to put on all sorts of things. <laughs> yeah, and our, um, the Nebraska School Librarian Association last year, um, we started talking about like uh, redoing our logo and just kind of updating things. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were just creating it based on graphics that we found in Canva and editing those, so. Yeah, um, more thank you, great tips. And someone says, I've created images for banners in Canva. Yep, yeah. Yeah. So think big too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's getting a little almost to five after 11 and I wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So um, I think we will work on wrapping it up for uh, this morning. Uh, you will have access to the slides and you can always reach out to, to Kelly at the school for any other any questions if you want to collaborate on anything or ask her tips and yeah. things how she's done you things. Want, like I said, I'm willing to share um, my emails at the end of the presentation. So if Perfect. you saw something that you'd like or you want some tips or help or suggestions, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help. Awesome. All right. I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen now to do my wrap up for the show. There we go. So uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much, Kelly. This is a great presentation. Um, like I said, I've used, you know, when I saw that you were doing, the, had done this presentation, I was like, oh, I want to learn more. I love, I love using Canva, but I'm sure there's so much, and there is still so much in there that I have not um, uh, even touched. <laughs> Uh, but now I want to do some more. I do want to explore a little more, especially that remove background thing. I do have a couple of different headshot photographs of myself, also not done professionally, that I use. Um, and I've had someone here years ago edit out a background, and it was okay. But I'm sure it could be done much better with something more made for on purpose like this. <laughs> so I'm going to be digging into more into Canvas. So thank you so much for being here with us this morning, Kelly. Um, this is great and so useful to people. And thank you everybody for attending. As I said, the show has been recorded um, if the, and it'll be on our archive page. If you use whatever is your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, you um, will come up with our pages. Nothing else is show, called that on the internet yet. Nobody can use the name. <laughs> so we come up first in the search results, our main page in our archives. Um, this is our main page with our upcoming shows showing here. And then right underneath them is a link to our archives. So this is where you'll go um, when the recording is ready. It'll be at the top of the list here, the most recent ones at the top. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Um, we also push it out into our various social media. We have a mailing list here within the state of Nebraska for um, library people, staff. And then we have Facebook, Twitter uh, that we push out things onto as well. Um, We'll have a link to the show recording on our YouTube channel and a link to uh, Kelly Slides in Canva that you will have access to. Uh, while I'm here on the archives, I'll show there is a search feature as well. If you want to see if we've done a show on a particular topic um, and you want to see if there's something here, you can search our full show archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current. And that is because this is our full show archives. And I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because if you look at the scroll bar over here, this is a huge page. This is all of our shows going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was January, 2009. So we're on what, 15, 16 years of this now going on. Um, and we have them all here though. Uh, and uh, so if you, as you are going through our show archives and looking at an old one, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. They all have a date and they're letting you know when the show was first done. Um, some of the shows will be great and fine to watch, stand the test of time, but some things will become old, outdated. Resources and services may have changed drastically or have discontinued totally. Uh, links might be broken. Um, People will work at different libraries or different places than where they worked at when we um, first had them on the show. So just pay attention to that date. 
but as long as we have a place to host have all these we will have them always up there this is something like you were saying kelly that um, we do um is want to share and keep things for historical purposes libraries do this and this is our historic history for uh encompass live so as long as we have a place to keep them all which right now is the youtube channel for the library commission we'll always have our show archives available up here back to the main page i did mention we do have a facebook page over here is our facebook if you like to use facebook give us a like uh, we post reminders here's a reminder to log into today's show uh, presenter reminders other things uh, we had to cancel one because the presenter wasn't available it's been rescheduled already um promoting other things so um if you like to use facebook you can give us a like over there or we use the hashtag and comp live little abbreviation of our show name on twitter and instagram um, to promote uh the show as well so that all wraps up for today's show i'll hope you join us next week when we will be talking about summer reading for next year 2024 uh, summer reading program 2024 the theme is adventure begins at your library and Sally Snyder, who is our coordinator of children and young adult library services here at the Library Commission is coming on to do her annual presentation of books that you might want to use for uh, summer reading next year. So if you are you're doing your summer reading or children's and youth services, this is a show for you. Uh, this is, um, for those of you in Nebraska know, at the end of the year, Sally always does her summer reading program. And then she does have coming up, if you're looking for it, her best new teen reads of the previous year. So for 2023, that's coming up on January 24th. And she already did her best new children's books of 2023 in November. So if you're looking for children's titles that she came across over 2023, there's her children's one. And her teen one is coming up in January. Um, at the end of the year, Sally always does these three sessions for us, children's books, teens books, and summer reading program for the next year. So um, again, thank you everybody for being here. Thanks, Kelly. Good to see you. Um, and I hope you all uh, join us on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.